Here's a reminder of just how bad the Patriots offense was last year. Worst in the league. Every category that say, matters. Say no more. Except for scoring. I say worst in the league. 31st on third down. Anyway, you know the rest. That, of course, led to the benching of Mac Jones. Today, Jones, I, I think, awkwardly <laughs> attended this press conference. He walked in through the media like there's no player area. You can't give this guy a little soft landing over where stand with fellow players. Instead, he, he goes back with Moose. <laughs> and freaking Gleason and Walt back with the, those are all cameramen folks and Pablo oh, back good. with the, the cameraman there it's like it was just sort of good stuff. awkward and then Gerard Mayo was asked about his vision for the offense he was asked about the vision of the offense going forward and here's what he said well first of all I would say just the energy right the passion the the leaders on the offensive side of the ball I think you have to get that stuff in place and and honestly you know as the season starts to roll. Well, this season, when it ends, we, we start in the weight room. Um, I think the weight room is one of the most important uh, areas in the building to really evaluate the people you have on your team. And one thing we don't want to do is have people who are complainers or finger pointing or, or things, like that, things like that. And the best teams I've really been a part of have been teams that, whether I'm talking about high school, college, or the NFL, teams that are not led by the players, but things are enforced by the players. It's like almost getting something, you know, your mom or dad telling you something versus your brother. Okay, so he's asked about the offense going forward. He says we need leadership. we got to hit the weight room and we don't want finger pointing and complaining. Um, Hi, Trent. Um, yeah, let me see. You know, I mean, look, it's not just Mac Jones, but you could say all those things about Mac Jones. No, absolutely, but also, you know, the finger pointing was a bunch of guys, Trent Brown and uh, Devontae Parker and Mac Jones. The weight room, yeah. Trent Brown, obviously, lack of leadership, starting with Mac Jones. So that was an unfortunate answer because I don't know what his vision is on offense. I don't think he has one. And he chose by answering a vision question by turning around and basically just pointing the finger at the offense again. And you guys were a bunch of clowns last year. And he's got, now got to think about himself as a head coach where that's not your offense, Gerard. It's not you're a defensive coordinator and pointing the finger at the mm -hmm. defense. You're responsible for those guys. So that's a big part of this too. Yeah, we have seen this with defensive head coaches before. I think, you know, most famously like the Ryans. Yeah, Buddy Ryan <laughs> right. and his son, yeah. Right. Yeah, like, and, and so that is a big part of it is what's your comprehensive vision and what is the offense that you want? What does it look like? And I do think that there's merit in what he's saying. I mean, there's definitely – there were some of those issues on offense last year. Those do have to be addressed. It is true that the weight room is an important place to start and all of that. But generally in these press conferences, you will see a coach, a head coach get up there and say, well, you know, we want to be, we want to be versatile on offense. We want guys who can play multiple spots. We want to play fast. We want to be decisive. We want it to look – to be simple for the players and look complex for the uh, for the defense, and we didn't really get a whole lot of that. There wasn't a lot to chew on there. Yeah, I, I, I think he does have a vision, but why, you know, why, a, why, yourself why, in? why would he tell it? Yeah, why, why would he say what it is? And even if he told what do you us think something, it is? Uh, I think it's probably some version of Smash Mouth football. Oh, some. I mean, but listen. We, we were talking about Jim Harbaugh the other night, and you were kind of excited about it. Okay, look, there, there's a For version. Of, is, there's, yeah. a, there's a smash mouth uh, from 1985, which nobody wants to see. There's a smash mouth of Jim Harbaugh and even John. Yeah. John Harbaugh now with the Ravens. The Ravens pretty much do that, too, where they've got a passing game, a pretty explosive passing game, but they got a power running game where they just kind of beat the hell out of you. San Francisco, the Niners, same yeah. thing. Niners same very thing. physical. I think he wants to that, – that's why he mentioned the weight room. I think – and this is what a lot of coaches do when they take over. They feel like the weight, the weight training is not uh, intense mm -hmm. enough, and they want their offense to be physical as well. well so I think, I think that's – And they all, he, also, he also knows that his strength coaches are going to spend more time with the players than anybody else. And so that's one way for a new coach to set a tone too. Okay, so I, mean, I do think Gerard got wrapped up in the offense-defense thing this past year. It was obvious when the offense was barely scoring. Mario was asked when he was the linebacker's coach if the defense resented – the other side of the ball. Here's his answer at the time. Yeah, you know, defensively, these guys have done a great job kind of, you know, just staying locked in on what we can do. And we always talk about control, the controllables. And uh, I think the guys, you know, have done a good job. I will say this, like, these are professional players, and they've acted in a professional manner. Uh, they have acted in a professional manner. Um, I don't see any drop-off as far as his attitude or willingness to go out there and play hard, and you won't see a drop-off this week as well. Okay, do you, do you think he's a Mac Jones guy? No. 
No. So why was Mac there? I, and I agree with you. I don't think he is either. Because I think Mac, why was Mac there? Is that a political move on Mac's part? I think, like, it's, hey, I think it's probably Mac realizing where he's at in his hey, career. I, like, I no, can, I think you're right. Like, I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's I think it's probably realizing where he's at in his career, and that if there's going to be a place where he's going to have a shot to start, this might be the only one. Like. I, like, I don't know if he can go to another team and get a starting job. Like, maybe he gets thrown into a competition or something like that. But, like, I, I don't think there's a starting job out there for him if it's not here. So he, if he's being real with himself and he's being self-aware, then that's certainly a conclusion you could come to. And if you came to that conclusion, then, yeah, you show up okay. a new coach's press conference. To this all-important third pick. You know, most people think it's going to go quarterback. Mm -hmm. Mayo hinted at that today. You'll hear that sound in one second. But just by point of reference, the fact is, and it's, and it's just a fact, most teams that are up there drafting the top three, it doesn't work. Uh, those are, I think those are 15 names, if I'm not mistaken. Only three were successful first-round picks. Mm. I, I don't count Jared Goff and Baker Mayfield. They Goff had to go to a Super Bowl with his first team. They had to go to second teams. They were cast off by their teams. Those teams do not consider those first overall picks a success. Ditto for Carson Wentz and on down the line. Mm. I will give you... Trevor Lawrence, I will give Burrow. you Joe Burrow. obviously Joe Burrow, and I will give Stroud. you C.J. Stroud. Other than that, wow. I think every other team on that list would say we are disappointed in our top three quarterback. It's hard. So Gerard Mayo said this to Steve Burton when asked about the third overall pick. He says, what I'm going to say is this. We're going to draft, draft the best player for a position that is very important. You put the pieces together. Sounds like he's pretty much saying we're drafting a quarterback mm. yeah. on that. Okay, so I'm not saying that's a mistake. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying don't draft a quarterback there. That's been misconstrued by some people. If there's a player worthy of the third pick, you draft him there. My point is, if there's a quarterback worthy of it, you draft him. My point is, it's really hard to get right. Yep. It's really hard to get right, and it's a fact. I just showed you what has happened the last decade. Most teams, by far, the vast, vast majority of teams, don't get it right. So it's hard. I think there are two, th two things coming to mind. One, I don't think you ever want to predetermine that you're taking one. I think that that's where you wind up taking Christian Ponder in the first round. That's where you wind up mm -hmm. taking E.J. Manuel when you manufacture it. Because the reality is, like, there are going to be five or six quarterbacks in the first round, I bet, this year, right? The numbers tell us maybe two make it. And your job is to find, one, find those two guys. And if one of those two guys isn't available to you, well, then you shouldn't use your first round pick on one, right? Like, right. So you just shouldn't. You should wait. Because there's nothing worse than, than than taking the wrong guy that high. The second piece of this is, I think so much of it is 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 what's around a guy and the situation that Thank they you. set up for you. And like, I'm not saying these guys wouldn't have made it. Look at the situation around Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. Look at the situation around Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Look at the situation around Josh Allen in Buffalo and how they brought him along. I can think of one quarterback over the over the time I've covered the league, almost two decades, who overcame bad circumstances at a young age. Some of them overcome bad mm. circumstances at an older age. There is one, and that's Andrew Luck. I was going to say Luck. He's the only one. Like, I can't think of anybody else who and Were there bad circumstances a, for him? Huh? There were bad circumstances well, for, for him? Well, for him, they stripped the team down after Peyton Manning left. They didn't draft very well. The offensive line was bad. I mean, T.Y. Hilton's a good yeah. player, yeah. but they struck out on a bunch of other skill position draft picks. The coach and, was Chuck Pagano, yeah, right? Yeah, like, and, they, and, they, and they went to the playoffs in his first year. They went to the divisional round in his second year. They went to the AFC Championship game in his then third he was year. Like, I'm, and he I'm, just took I'm, such I'm, an ass-kicking. I'm tired ass -kicking. of this, right. He yeah. just took such an ass-kicking that they beat it out of him. So, but he's the only guy I can think of. Like, if you look at all these guys, the guys who make it generally go into good situations. Even Joe Burrow, who went to, like, a, what was a bad franchise at the time, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. Okay. I mean, I, so Michael. This, so Michael Felger did say it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to get the position. It's right. also hard to have the well, right environment around. Well, well it, it's hard. Yeah, it is. It's, it's yep. difficult. Like yep. I mean, for everybody, right? It's hard. And so if you get it right, it's kind of like a lottery ticket. Well, yep. no. Well, this. It's guy, hard. Well, I think Mike's trying to set up. <laughs> check. Oh, come on out. Time. Come on. You, got, you go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love. You're that saying is, that was lucky? Blessed. That's, that's lucky? blessed. You're oh, blessed. Come on. You're blessed. <laughs> like, you didn't know. Are you t you're telling me. Like, no one I, can predict who's a Hall of Famer. That's all I'm saying. It's well, like, but that's stupid. It's, it's not stupid. It's like, like it doesn't happen. No one scouts, no one Mike, scouts Hall of Fame. Mike, you can't that. Come on. It's great. They've but they got did, a good job. But they did have but some other no guys. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, oh, here's, here's, our, oh, here's our organizational plan. We'll go from Brett Favre.
Aaron Rodgers to this kid who looks like he's going to be pretty good. Like, no organization but, but Michael, don't do that. I, I will Okay. It's a heat check. It's a heat check somebody. by Eastern Propane and Oil. They're in your neighborhood. Well, are the Packers <laughs> lucky or good when it comes to the quarterback thing? What do you think? They were good because they, they, they got ahead of it. And I think that the important thing there is that they gave themselves the leeway to develop him and sit him if he needed to be sat, which he needed to be sat. And I talked to Matt LaFleur about this over the summer. I remember asking him, do you think he did the right thing? He thinks, he said, I think every quarterback should be afforded the time to develop. The worst thing you can do, because a lot of these guys go into bad situations, is throw him out there before he's ready in a bad situation. His confidence gets broken. And at the NFL level, it's almost impossible to get a guy's confidence back after he loses it. Jordan Love would have lost his confidence if he would thrown him out there in year one or year two. Jordan Love, if he played in year yeah. one or year two, would be out of the league right a now. A mess. Yeah, yeah he, he would have been he, a mess. He was right. So it's not, Mike, just that they got the picks right. Like, that's just sort of secondary. It's what they brought them into. They, they weren't pressured to play early. They had good offensive coaches. Back in the day, Mike McCarthy's offense was viable. Sure. And he yeah. was a decent coach. Yep. So they were in the book. They were in the system. They were tied at the hip with good offensive coaching, brought up in a quarterback culture. OK, and that's the exact opposite of what's going on here. And that's my L concern. listen, you're, you're right. And I think they've done a good job. But let me quote one of my favorite uh, radio hosts. Most of these guys suck. I'm telling you, most of them suck. You draft a quarterback, he's mm. going to suck. But you know why? <laughs> OK, that's what you that's what you okay, said. But, so, OK, but, and you're right. OK, but what right. I mean don't, is don't take it back. The teams suck. OK, Mitch Trubisky sucks, but it turns out Jared Goff has got a little something. And yeah. the Rams are certainly a good organization. And yeah. I don't know why it didn't go right there. But and McVay, you had the right coach for okay, him. Okay, so that, that should have worked there. Yeah. It didn't. But a lot of times, they're just ruined by the situation that they're putting right. into. Oh, yeah.